Okay, we are going in five, four, three, two, one. Hi, I'm George, and this week we travel to Thunder Down Under up in Queensland, a big international launch event. Uh, it's a couple of days drive, so we took it easy again. Uh, we spent a couple of days getting there. It's about 850 kilometers north of Sydney. Now, in this video, we're going to show you a couple of flights we did with Dark Shadow there, uh, and both of these flights had our own uh, new personal altitude records. So let's have a look at the first flight. For Dark Shadow, we've now switched over to using the Horizon Launcher, which gives us access to higher pressures and allows us to locate the launcher about 50 metres away. Here we're connecting up the hoses to the scuba tank and the release head. Here we're assembling the deployment mechanism and packing the parachute. Now make sure you remember to remove that rubber band before putting it inside the rocket. Next, we fill up the rocket with 1.8 litres of water. We now also load the rocket onto the guide rail and release head in the gazebo. This makes it much easier than out at the launcher. Uh, so if you would like the pieces of your parachute back uh, to wipe up the tears from the flight, I have it up here at the LCO table. You're more than happy to pick it up. Here we're connecting the hose to the release head. Now we're using a sun shield just to try and keep the rocket cool as long as possible. Uh, the ambient temperature on the day was around 32 degrees Celsius. Uh, so yeah, so we'll be waiting uh, a little bit here for, uh, for, the, for the rocket to launch, but uh, once they get up to pressure, they will want to, uh, want to fire pretty quickly. And uh, the rocket is called Dark Shadow. George and uh, his crew has been doing water rockets for quite a long time. Uh, this is an incredibly cool, very tall water bottle rocket. We're at 200. They're about 200 PSI so far climbing. Again, looking for 800 PSI. Okay, go. Okay, we are going in five, four, three, two, one. Wow. That is a three meter tall rocket up there. They were looking for about 2,100 feet. And sure enough, we have an excellent parachute. That was awesome. Thanks so much, George. That worked great. Here are a few different angles of the same launch. Uh, if you're at all interested in what like the pinnacle of water rocket technology can do, I'm sure George can talk you uh, talk you through everything he does. It's just really really cool stuff. Well done. Ready? Let's see. Let's see the altitude. So we were pretty happy with that result. Now there was a couple of things we noticed uh, in the review of the videos uh, from this launch. Now what used to happen is when the rocket launches is about 110 kilos pushing onto the launch tube and that used to push the whole guide rail into the soil. So this time we had a much more solid base for the whole thing to sit on. Uh, and that certainly stopped that happening. Uh, but what we've noticed is when the rocket launches, the guide rail will deflect slightly because of the cantilevered nature of the release head. And as a result, the rocket will hit the top of the guide rail. So we're probably going to add another support foot underneath the uh, launcher itself in line with the launch tube. 
and that will hopefully stop that twisting motion uh, when the rocket launches. Now, the other thing that we noticed was that uh, when the rocket comes off the launch tube, it's about a meter and a half in the air, but when the water came down, it actually hit the side of the launcher here and deformed it quite significantly. You can see that that's a almost two millimeter thick aluminum and I can't force that back by hand. So there's quite a lot of force that's generated. Uh, so that tells us we should probably protect the staging mechanism on the Horizon project uh, because of the amount of force that's developed. So anyway, let's have a look at the second launch. Unfortunately, the drone filled up its SD card before we could film the rest of the landing. The rocket drifted a long way downrange in the wind. It landed about half a kilometre away from where it launched. Look how far that went! Alright Paul, moment of truth. Yeah, the camera went into the... Oh no, okay. 2,269. Wow. Hard to see, but well, that's flashing out 2,269. So we were even happier with that result. Now we did notice when the rocket landed, it had a small uh, zipper uh, in the deployment mechanism for when the parachute opened. Now it wasn't a, a serious one, we could have repaired it on site, uh, but there was a real danger that maybe some of the fibers were still showing and that could snag the parachute. So we decided to uh, defer the launch until next time. Uh, we will, however, probably replace the Dark Shadow deployment mechanism with uh, the Horizon one. Now, the Horizon one is smaller. Um, it's also uh, lighter and it's also designed for higher accelerations. It still has the same payload, still same size parachute, so that's all the same. Uh, it's same diameter, so it's easier to fit. Um, and uh, just for comparison, here is the original Shadow uh, deployment mechanism. Uh, now, this one is now 40% uh, lighter than the original, um, so it's a, quite a significant saving in weight. We will launch a Dark Shadow again. Uh, we'll try again at a higher pressure now that we're using the Horizon launcher. Uh, we have access to higher pressures and probably starting at 1000 psi and then 1100, 1200, depending on if the rocket survives. Otherwise, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.